How does the primary arms 1 to 6x ACSS stack up against other modern low power variable optics? Stick around. Because we're we're going to tell you. What is up guys, my name is John with pewpewtactical.com, your definitive source for gun reviews, gear guides, and all things that go bang. Low power variable optics are a great middle ground between the close up functionality and quick target acquisition that you would find in red dots and holographic sites, while also affording you the ability to get eyes on distant targets and get a 6x zoom if needs be via a rotating turret. You may remember that we have previously reviewed the Vortex Strike Eagle, which is another 1 to 6 LPVO that is essentially a direct competitor to the primary arms 1 to 6, and both are generally within 10 or 15 dollars of one another at any given time on Amazon. So how does the primary arm stack up? For starters, one of the biggest differences between the two optics is going to be the reticle style. While the Strike Eagle's reticle is totally serviceable, one of our primary gripes was the lack of any central reference point inside of the circular halo. Primary Arms' advanced combat sighting system is admittedly an incredibly generic string of words, but the reticle itself is a pretty big improvement. The ACSS includes a central chevron that makes accurate shots at distance fairly easy, especially when your target is relatively small. You've also got numbered bullet drop, wind hold, and moving target lead indicators to boot. I'm a pretty visually oriented person, so having the numbered range reference points inside of the ACSS makes getting on target that much quicker, especially as compared to the relatively blank reticle found inside the Strike Eagle. Although we only tested the optic of 5.56, Primary Arms advertises that the ACSS should be accurate with the AK-74's 5.45x39 as well as standard 308, which is interesting given the different ballistic characteristics of each of those rounds. The Primary Arms optic also slightly edges out the Strike Eagle in terms of reticle illumination. Although the Strike Eagle's illumination was decent, it wasn't much use during the day, whereas the highest setting on the ACSS was reasonably visible during the very bright conditions we experienced in the desert while filming. For size comparison, the Primary Arms 1-6 ACSS is approximately the same size as this Kielbasa that's been imprisoned within a scope mount. As mentioned, this is a 1-6x optic, and it really shines during situations in which you might need to engage multiple targets at several different ranges. We quite like that the zoom dial feels a little bit more fluid and takes less force to operate than the Strike Eagles, though it definitely doesn't feel loose. You can also upgrade the zoomy wheel with the addition of a throw lever that'll give you a little bit more of a mechanical advantage when you're adjusting the zoom on the fly. One of our bigger complaints with the Strike Eagle was the fact that the outer edge of the glass starts to distort a bit past 4x or so, but we're happy to report that the primary arms ACSS is crystal clear all the way up to 6x. Weight between the two models isn't really a consideration, as they're within half an ounce of one another. Although if weight is a concern, we definitely recommend snagging an Aero Precision ultralight mount, as 30mm scope mounts can add quite a bit of noticeable heft. So does the Primary Arms 1-6 ACSS beat the Strike Eagle in terms of the best bang for your buck in a low power variable optic? In our opinion, definitely. The Strike Eagle, again, is not a bad optic by any means, but with the Primary Arms, you're getting a better reticle, slightly better illumination, and crystal clear magnification all the way out to 6x especially considering the fact that there is a negligible price difference between the two, our vote goes to primary arms. The ACSS is a great foot in the door of the LPVO world, and at $300 at the time of this filming, it offers a damn good value for those who are not looking to run a red dot and a magnifier setup, or who aren't ready to shell out the six to $800 that the next step up in LPVOs generally cost. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel as we've got lots more on the way. Once again, my name is John with PewPew Tactical, and we will see you next time.